And with that, just all the special ceremonies before the game, senior day festivities, as well as the veterans being on the field during the national anthem, the flyover, just go a little bit more into how much uh, those two combined mean to your program. Well, you know, um, we have we, we had a small senior class, Cedric Foray, Dwayne Grantham, and Zach Fry, but all real, real key performers for us in, in our program. Other guys that we wanted to make sure that we celebrated them and that we celebrate, you know, and, and we found a way to win. So their senior day will be something that they remember. Um, I'm, I'm a huge, I believe in our military. I love our country. I love what uh, we're allowed to have in this country. And I'm, I believe that it's not anything that you could do without the military uh, service members that provide us with that freedom. Um, anytime that we can celebrate the sacrifices that uh, the military service and veterans make for us, <coughs> excuse me, and to be able to do it actually on Veterans Day uh, was actually a pretty cool day, a pretty cool deal. Um, I, I applaud our administration. I think our administration does everything they can do to do that event first class from the multiple flyovers we have to inviting the service members on the field to be with both teams. I thought Mercyhurst University showed a tremendous amount of class and how they they were very receptive to the veterans and took to partake in that af- that afternoon event. Um, so I thought it was, and I thought everybody in the stadium uh, did a tremendous job. I mean, it, so to be able to have that as one of the mainstays of your program year in and year out, uh, I think is a beautiful thing. Coach, your team uh, was able to have thirteen guys named to the first and second. Team all PSAC East. Um, with everything that you lost, you know, heading into this season, with all the guys that you graduated last year and guys that went to the NFL, um, a lot of people, I guess, had questions about how your team would perform. But you had a ton of guys step up, and and that uh, PSAC East first and second team really shows that this program is still very competitive and at a, a high and elite level. You know, I think it's a credit to our coaching staff, the fact that how hard they went to work right after the season ended last year. Uh, we were able to find some really key performers in the transfer portal in January that were here for spring, the spring winter conditioning, spring ball, got to know our program. Uh, Harold O'Neill on the defensive side, uh, um, Jeremiah Taylor on the offensive side, Barry Hill. Uh, we had, and there were several other guys that I probably am missing that were here, came in December, or, or in January, I'm sorry, January, and were fully acclimated into our program. Um, really excited. You know, I think that was a great start uh, to building our roster for this football season. Credit to Coach Luke Wright, our recruiting coordinator. He just does great things for our program. Uh, and, the, you know, the work that he puts in, I, I, I really, and, a, and our whole coaching staff, uh, you know, the, the season ended last year. We played deep into December. Uh, we were into the portal. We had guys on campus. I thought we did a great job in identifying the right guys to bring into the program to help us be where we are today. I also believe in, in our traditional recruiting that we've had. Uh, we've had we had a lot of really good players in the program ready to step up. And some of those guys are on that all-conference team. And, and the guy that sticks out the most to me is James Bell, first-team all-conference center. Uh, you know, was a, was a key member of our program the last two years, was a backup last year. Uh, could have, would have stepped in and done a great job. Uh, he's one that I could tell you. Brandon Carr is another one I thought uh, was fantastic and uh, in a backup role last year and, and became a starter in – earned second-team all-conference. Chandler Brown continues to get better. Ty Lucas, uh, he's having a tremendous Shepherd University football career. Amari Terry uh, on the defensive side of the ball, along with uh, Miles Greer, impact freshman that came in. Uh, so, I mean, we're, we're just very fortunate. Uh, the move we had with Malachi Brown uh, from wide receiver to running back coming off his injury, the transfer of Seth Morgan that, that came in. So the all-conference team is made up of guys that we recruited as freshmen that kind of came up through the program uh, and kind of earned their way onto it. And it also gave us the ability 
to, quite frankly, bring in uh, some maturity and some depth uh, that could help impact our roster. Um, so we're, we're kind of a program that, we, you know, we'll, when we go after a transfer, we're going to go after ones that can come in and help us. But the key for any transfer that comes in, they have to buy into Shepherd University football and being a part of what our tradition is. Regular season comes to an end after last week. You guys finished nine and two. What have you liked from your team so far this year that you hope to continue doing coming into this week's postseason start? And what are some things that you guys need to improve on still? Uh, you know what? I think our our team grew from week one to where we are uh, going in the first week of pro, uh, postseason play. Uh, when I think that we had to score late in the game uh, to find a way to win uh, at home here in the home opener and how we just got better as a football team each and every week. You could see us getting better in all three phases, offense, defense, and special teams. This has been one of the best special team performances I can remember in recent history. <laughs> the, the key plays that they made throughout the year, um, I'm really pleased with, uh, you know, just how, how our team has grown. And I, I think I said that at the beginning of the year. I said, you know, our, our success is going to be really determined on how fast our team can come together. And I think our team has done a nice job of coming together, over the, especially over the last seven weeks, and really playing like who we are, who we can be. Coach, you guys were moved out of Super Region 1 and into Super Region 2. How do you feel about the committee's decision to move you uh, in terms of your region? Well, you know what? I, I, it's not, you know, I, I, it's not my job to really question what they did or why they did it. Um, I know that, you know, the, the powers to be have to be really mindful of how money is spent uh, for NCAA travel and NCAA, NCAA postseason. You know, I think there's going to be a move to expand the playoffs. Uh, team that uh, expand the pool even moving forward. So I think as a as a program or as a coach in college football at this level, I have to you know understand like hey we're going to make the best move that we can to be able to have the most teams represented that deserve to be in the national playoffs. And if we need to move somebody out of one region to another to eliminate an air flight. We're, they're going to do it, and I, I really believe that's what it did. That's why it did. Now, as far as me as the coach, um, you know, I, I thought we were going to have a chance to go play their old conference foe in Charleston University, which I thought would have been a lot of fun. And I think it would have been great to play Kutztown again and kind of, you know, that's become a really key big rivalry on the season and postseason play. Um, both those places would have been places that would have been easy for our fans to get to. Uh, I think that would have been fun, the energy and the excitement that we would have had in the, in the crowd. I thought would have been outstanding, especially if we were at Kutztown less than three hours away. Uh, but, I, you know, all those things I forgot about on Monday morning when I came to work, and we focused on Lenore Ryan and being in Super Region 2. What have you seen off the film about Lenore Ryan so far that has impressed you? Uh, Lenore Ryan's a well-coached football team. They're really solid in all three phases, offense, defense, special teams. Uh, they're very sound with the things they do. They run the football well. Uh, they have very explosive receivers that can get down the field. Um, they're very good up front. Uh, I think that and you can tell that they're, they're playing within the scheme. Defensively, they're fast, they're physical, they get after, I mean, they get a lot of dudes to the ball. I think their safety play is outstanding. Um, I think their front seven is awesome. And I think they're very good in the special teams. Their best players play special teams. So, you know, we're going to have our hands full, and I'm sure we're going to have to the dude, we're going to have to play a really, really solid football game. Uh, we're going to have to be a team that, you know, plays smart, uh, we take care of the football offensively and in the kicking game to make ourselves hard to beat. Coach, your former offensive coordinator, Tyler Haynes, uh, coached against them this season. Have you spoken with him at all since he's been able to see Lenore Ryan in person? I have. Uh, we, we have talked to Coach Haynes. Um, you know, by no means, he didn't help us with any game plan or anything. He did a few things to help confirm a couple things, but 
you know, it's more like, hey, man, how you doing? What do you think? And hey, tell me about the locker room setup. Tell me about the home field. What's like, you know, things like that. Um, you know, he didn't, he didn't have any nuggets that I can tell you that we're going to be able to tuck away and uh, magically pull out and score 21 points on offense. Um, but he, you know, it's nice having somebody that's familiar with that conference, familiar with Lenore Ryan. Um, but, you know, we, you know, he just confirmed what our coaches saw in film. We're going to have to play very well. So we're joined by Ernie McCook, the head coach of the Shepherd Rams football team. Coach McCook, something that I feel like for the past few years, the position that your team is currently in hasn't been said before in these past years, and that's the underdog role going into this game. How do you kind of preach that mentality into your team to fire them up? Well, I, I like to think our players have great uh, focus and desire to be great, and uh, whether we were a heavy favorite or an underdog, it would come with great effort and energy. Um, you know, we're you know, I we believe we were preparing to go down there and find a way to win. Um, we know that they're a good football team. We know we're the team that's gotten moved out of our region. Uh, we're, I guess, you could say the expendable team. And the NCAA playoffs, uh, you know, we, we they can move us, and I think that just shows you where the where they feel Shepherd football is this year, and that um, you know they didn't they didn't make this move to make it better for Shepherd University. They made this move to save money, and if they had to put 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 the horns on somebody, they did us. Um, you know, Lenore Ryan's a good football team. We're the underdog. We're going to play them. And uh, we're our, our guys are going to play hard no matter who we're playing. Is it exciting in some ways, though, to coach, to have a different challenge and um, play in a different coaching, region? Coaching in postseason football is exciting and it's special. Um, and that you know, it, it would be easy to say we deserve to be one place or deserve to be another. Um, but again, we had to lose that mindset quickly because where we were saying we were, we're going to region two, we're going to play a very good football team. We're very proud to have earned the right to play in the NCAA playoffs. And we're going to do our best to compete at the highest level as a program. Um, when I talk about what's it, when you ask exciting, um, you know, I, you know, it, here, here's the one thing it's going to be, it's going to be seven degrees and sunny. Okay, so there. I think that's pretty cool. We're going to go play in warmer weather. I think our guys play well in warm weather. Warm weather. So we'll we'll see how it plays out. Final thoughts on this game, Coach, before we let you go. You know, we've got to play well. Um, we've got to play well in all three phases. Uh, I think any any big mistakes in any one of the three phases could it will hurt the team holistically. Uh, we know we have to go down there and win together, play together, um, to win together, and um, we have to support each other uh, offensively, defensively, and in the kicking game. All those things are very important. Uh, I'm excited to go play. I think our team's excited to go play. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're less than, what, 48 hours from kickoff. So that's a really cool deal. All right, Coach McCook, appreciate the time today and safe travels down to North Carolina. Hey, thanks, guys. And I appreciate all the support you guys give us all year long. You guys do a great job with the coverage. Um, and hopefully we'll be continuing to have this conversation.